Sometimes in Overwatch, even if you don't have the best mechanics, if you can land one good ult, you can completely sway the fight for your team. We've gone over offensive ultimates and tank ultimates, so today we're continuing our best tips for every ult series with the support category. My name is Nathan, and this is Blizzard Guides. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is another installment in this series, so after watching this video, you should definitely go check those out if you want to learn the offensive ultimates or the tank ultimates. This is going to be structured in the same way, we're going to go over the proper usages of each ultimate, so when to use your ult, what you should be accomplishing when you ult, and then how to maximize the usage of each ult. I'll also be teaching you some advanced techniques if there are any applying to that ultimate. This list isn't in any particular order, so without further ado, let's get right into this list. So at number 7, we're taking a look at Mercy. Mercy is by far the most popular support, and with her semi-recent rework, there hasn't been too many players who have really learned when and where to use her ult. Luckily, it's actually pretty straightforward. Mercy as a hero becomes stronger as the fight sustains. She's definitely the most consistent healer in the game, and her ult becomes the pinnacle of her lifespan. Your ult builds really quickly if your tanks are getting ult up for you quickly, so you want to use your ult whenever one of three things occur. One, if it's coming down to the wire and your team needs a slight advantage, Valkyrie is ideal for swaying the fight. Because of its fast charging, you can have your ult up every other fight, if not every fight. Thus, you want to use it reactionarily, not as a planned out ult. If your team is trading, Valk can mitigate this and allow your team to get a numbers advantage quickly. Second, you want to use Valk if your DPS are going for a big play. Hero plays as risky as they can be can still be the difference between won and lost games. If you see a ally DPS who has been performing solidly, you can use your Valk to provide an advantage to that team member because you are no longer at at risk and you can confidently switch from heals to power because of that increased range and speed that you get as you Valk. So for example, if your Genji is going for Dragon Blade, the most consistent healing you can get from a relatively low cost ult would be Valkyrie. And third, you want to use Valk during intense teamfights. You'll be able to get a ton of value out of Valk when your team is grouped up and because of that group healing and group power boosting. And because of the increased Guardian Angel's speed and range, you'll be able to quickly swoop in for a valuable res should the enemy become distracted. Some people will disagree, but I think that using Valk to get a res in Mercy's current state is still very powerful. You'll be harder to hit because you are in the air, and if you time it properly, you won't even be noticed. Even if you're shot at, you have the regen and quick escape, so going for reses will be valuable. Other important tips to offer would be if you see an ally that is very critical, don't Valk if you're trying to just heal them in range. You have a 0.5 second cast time for Valk, so you can't heal for that period of time. Just get them up to 50 with the normal healing, and then Valk if you still need to. The exception, obviously, is if they're out of range. However, you probably still won't be fast enough. Another important tip is to seriously use the fast movement speed and range. You can be nearly across the map around three corners and still have time to peek, hide, and then guardian angel, peek, hide, and keep resetting the timer for disconnecting the beam. You can be insanely far away and moving a lot. Another really big thing is just to remember that you have your gun. If there's a widow or soldier or something like that on high ground and they're distracted or slept, you can sometimes get the kill. Don't ignore the important allies that need heals, so if your Ryan is very low and he needs to be up for the fight to be won, you probably probably want to go heal your Rhine, but if the enemy is up there and they're causing a lot of issues and maybe none of your teammates really need that much healing, you can still pull out your gun, fly up to them and try and get the kill. Next up at number 6 we have Brigida. Brigida is a new hero and you probably haven't played her in comp yet seeing as she isn't even out in comp at the time of filming this video. But with that said, after playing a ton of her in pugs, I do have to say her ult is actually pretty lackluster. There are a few usages that are objectively correct to use her ult in, but there really isn't that much to say when it comes to her ult. Her main power, as you may have found, is in her armor packs, and her ultimate is just an extension of that. Providing 30 armor per second at up to 150 armor per ally, this ult is really useful as anti-dive, so so let's say if your team is about to engage an enemy that is counterdiving, using your ult in that scenario is probably the only scenario that it really makes sense in. I would suggest using your ult on engagement or during the early stages of a mid fight. Using it towards the end of the fight isn't really going to be best, only because that extra armor is only useful when you're taking the brunt of the damage. You want to be regening that armor as your team is taking damage, since you'll provide more armor in total, rather than if you were to give your team max armor and then not have them take any damage. You want to generally use this ult with other ults, a few examples might include Dragon Blade, Chill Gen, High Noon, or Tactical Visor. This ult is really, really good against heroes that don't do a lot of burst damage because of the nature of armor. Armor reduces damage by 50% up until the armor reduces 5 HP, so a 10 damage bullet would do 5 damage and a 12 damage bullet would do 7. It basically reduces the damage either by 50% or by 5 damage, whichever final damage is greater. So because of this fact, you're going to be most potent when using this ult while getting dove. The only technical tip I can provide for using your ult is in tandem with shield bash jumping so that you can reach 
a few more locations that you normally can't without using the speed boost provided by the ult. Other than that, her ult is pretty simple. The next few ults, however, will certainly have some pretty cool tips that you probably didn't know about. At number 5, we have Zenyatta. Zen's ult is by far the most powerful defensive ult in the game. With 300 heals per second and a duration of 6 seconds, you can generally negate 2-3 ults with a single Zen ult. While Zen's ult usage is pretty straightforward, it's actually the management of the usage that is most difficult to learn. As Zen, your ultimate takes quite a long time to charge, and because of the fact that it can negate so many ultimates, you have to be very careful and analytical about when you use this ultimate. I'm going to walk you through three different example scenarios. First, let's say that your team is contesting an assault point 3 to 5. You don't have that many ults up, but the enemy does. They use grav and they use Hanzo ult. Do you use your ultimate? In this case, no, it's a lost fight. You aren't going to get any value from trancing in that situation. Rather, you would want to save trans for the next fight when your team can get a bit more value from it. Unless your team has some killer ults and respawns on their way, I really wouldn't have used it in that scenario. The second situation. You're on point 3 of attack king's row and you're with your Ryan and Zarya contesting the point that only has about a few meters to go. Your Anna and Genji are on their way with Nano and Blade, but your two tanks are low and about to die. In this situation, despite not using trans to counter any enemy ultimates, you want to use it here so that you can keep your tanks up and allow your Genji to blade and clean up while your tanks create space. This is one of the best uses that you can get from trans, however, your Genji must be able to guarantee that he can clean a few kills with the tanks, should the enemy have any ults up to use after you trans. And lastly, you're on a control map and the enemy just used trans to push up and attempt to win the fight. Both teams have somewhat even even ults and you have about the same amount of players on your team. Do you trans? Yes, here you actually want to trans as well. A good rule of thumb is if the fight is even and the enemy has used their defensive support ultimates, you want to use yours but slightly after the enemy has used theirs. While both defensive ults are up, the fight is relatively stalled since both teams are generally invulnerable. However, if your team survives the first few seconds that the enemy support ults are up, you will get a few extra seconds after the enemies is up to frag some kills. Now for some technical tips, these are really good ones. You can use trans to jump some gaps that you normally wouldn't be able to. You want to look for those and perhaps learn some to get some really good technical strats out of trans. You can use trans to get in between an enemy Ryan pin and an ally or really just generally any damage since you'll be invulnerable. Always remember to discord before transing since you won't be able to discord while you're using transcendence. Also remember that trans can't heal through line of sight or enemy shields so don't trans and stay in an enemy Winston bubble since you won't heal any of your allies. And lastly don't be afraid to trans if you're low health especially if your team is about to win the round. If you deem your team capable of winning a stall fight, you can trans to ensure the victory. Saving three allies when going for a stall is huge, but if you're dead, Discord won't be there to clean up and neither will you be there to heal. Next up, at number 4, we're taking a look at Symmetra. Symmetra's section will be very short because there isn't very much tech or complexity to her ultimate, so I'm going to explain to you when to use Shield Gen versus Teleporter and where to put them. So usually, you want to go for Shield Gen over Teleporter. Shield Gen really is significantly better than Teleporter just because you have so much more sustain with Shield Gen, and because Shield Gen just lasts significantly longer. The basic rule is go for a Teleporter if your team just died and you're the only one up. You can use Tele behind the point or nearby to cart your team to the proper spot. Spot. The only requirement is that you let them know beforehand, otherwise your telly will be wasted. You want to put shield gen nearby your spawn if it is in range, or put it on a big flank route that isn't normally traveled. For teleporter, you want to put it on a flank or behind a major choke point of the map. Don't overvalue your ultimate though, if it gets destroyed, it gets destroyed. You want to just get the value that you can in the time that you can and return to the fight as soon as possible, because your area of denial and damage is more important than your ultimate. And now for some good tips, you can put telly down on the point if it's the last mid fight you'll either distract the enemy to put some damage on that teleporter or you'll get your respawns in. It's super useful and underutilized as sim. I don't see a lot of players using this and you can literally put telly on the point if your respawns are coming in. In addition to this, if a tracer or genji is giving you a hard time and it's last point and you need to get them off point quickly, you can sometimes put the telly or shield gen on a flank and force the enemy flanker to go look for that rather than being brawling on point. Next up at number 3, we're taking a look at the hippity hoppity frog boy Lucio. Lucio's ult is the second best defensive ult in the game in my opinion. It is essentially the equivalent of burst protection. You're going to be able to use it to protect any high burst damage, but not sustain for very long. Now again, a lot of people may not agree with this, but Lucio's ult really shouldn't be used to counter ultimates directly unless your allies are propped up to aid in countering of said ult. For this reason, I strongly suggest using your ult during mid fights that are crucial to the victory of the game, because of the damage negation 
protection nature and the burst protection that it can provide. Granted, the enemy will likely be using ults during that fight. However, the sonic barrier provided is going to be enabling your teammates to defend against those ultimates, rather than something like Zenyatta's ult, which is going to be the sole protection for your team. Now, with that said, you definitely want to use sound barrier while stuck in a grab or to protect your team while they are shattered. But just like with Zenyatta, carefully analyzing the worth of saving your teammates in the stun is more valuable than the ult itself. Lucio's ult can seriously sway a fight, so don't just garbage can it because you were in a grab and the only other two teammates were in that grab. If there are only two teammates, you probably don't want to save them because you probably already lost that fight. And also, like with Zen's ult, using it after the enemy's support ult is thrown out is significantly more valuable than using it beforehand. Using your support ult before the enemy's defensive ult will pretty much guarantee that you lose the fight. If you can combo your ult with something like Brigida's ult or any DPS ult, you'll also get a lot of value out of it. Amp right before or after you use your ult, since you'll be able to get past chokes and take a bit more of a dangerous position as a team because of that increased health and speed. Never jump off a structure and ult or just jump before you ult because it can get cancelled while you're in the air. Always make sure to maintain line of sight when you ult, but if you can't, there is actually a short period of time when you ult where you can still make LOS contact and get the shield to an ally. So if you land behind a corner and walk around it, you can get the barrier to allies around the corner. And number two, we have Anna. This section is going to be extremely short just because Anna's ult isn't very complex, nor does it have many techs. Anna's ult charges fairly quickly, so you want to use it during fights that a slight advantage will help in. You can use this ult whenever you're looking to engage a fight quickly because you'll be able to have a face tank or forward facing DPS take more damage and deal more damage. This combination makes it optimal to put on tanks or DPS that are going in deep because of its increased protection and lent potential to allies. Typically, you'll nano heroes like Genji, Farah, Soldier, Winston, or Ryan, but really any heroes with high burst or crowd control work. You can use this ult at any point in the fight, however the time that you use it will be dependent on the win condition. If your team can roll a fight quickly, you want to use it at the beginning. If your team needs some sort of advantage in a mid fight, nano will do just that. If you're last second contesting, you definitely want to nano as soon as possible to get some extra kills in. Lastly, if you want to clean up a fight to win a round, depending on how quickly the enemy respawns are coming in, you might want to nano there as well. There aren't many techs I am aware of when it comes to nanoing, so nothing else to report here. At number 1, we have Moira. Moira's ult is a very frequently misused ultimate. I'm going to start off by saying, don't go for damage when you ult. This is the biggest mistake you can make as Moira. If you're going to ult because you want to put more damage in, don't use your ultimate. It's that simple. You always want to prioritize healing when you ult. You should never ult with the intention of dealing damage. You always want to be healing when you ult. Moira's ult is best used when trying to engage as a team because you can negate any poke damage, in addition to providing pressure and minor poke damage to the enemy team. Rarely do you want to use Moira's ult on cleanup like with most support ultimates. If you're running out of healing as Moira, you can use your ult to pick up on that healing if really necessary. But mainly, because of the low cost of this ult, you want to be using it to provide necessary heals and deal pressure to the enemy team. Its main benefit is its combination of damage and heals. You're not really doing any extra damage or extra healing when you're using this ult, only you're doing them at the same time. Utilizing speed boost from this ultimate is useful for lining up your healing with an enemy, so you can have a direct line of contact between the two, allowing you to do damage and do healing at the same time. This is the only acceptable time that you should be directly going for damage, with an exception or two. You can also do a lot of work when the enemy has a shield heavy comp. If you use your ult to provide damage behind the shield that the enemy thought was protecting them, you'll be able to scare the enemy into falling back and giving up any positioning that they fought for. Coalescence does not do enough healing to outheal an enemy ultimate, so never use coalescence with the notion of outhealing the enemy's ultimate in mind. There are two technical tips when it comes to using her ultimate. First, always throw an orb before ulting. If your team will need extra healing, you can throw it for a short burst of about 200 heals per second, and if your team is doing okay on heals and you want to take out a low health enemy, throwing that orb in the direction of said enemy and then healing your allies up until the orb makes contact with the enemy and then aiming at the enemy will do significant amounts of damage, allowing you to sometimes get a quick secure kill on the enemy. Second, you can melee after coalescence is up to cancel the animation of your melee to get a quick extra 30 damage on an enemy if they are too close. This is really really good against tracers and genjis especially since you'll be best equipped to 1v1 them because of the low precision required as moira that extra 30 damage doesn't seem like a lot but it actually goes a very long way considering it doesn't cost any time at all
Anyway, I hope this guide helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments down below what hero you'd like to see featured next. I'm always reading the comments to see your suggestions. Also, if you have any general questions about this game, you can always tweet me on Twitter at Engage underscore EXE or leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video as it really helps us know that you guys are enjoying this content. Don't forget to subscribe as we have a lot of epic moments videos so that you can see the best plays from around the globe. And we have tips and tricks videos just like this so that you can be the best player that you can be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. My name is Nathan and this was Blizzard Guides.